Hello students, today we are going to be working in our volume 2 math book on lesson 31, session 1. So turn your book to page 673. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about before we even get started on our lesson today is um, circles. Every circle has 360 degrees in it. So if you put a dot in the middle of a circle, just like how these are circles, and when you turn them, the numbers are worth five, or with one each. So when you go through a circle, when you're measuring it with degrees, it's kind of like a clock. Each little space is worth one degree, except for a normal circle is worth 360 degrees. Whereas our clocks that we have on the wall, they only have 60 minutes in them. So they're a little bit different, but kind of similar. So thinking about that, we're going to take that information and combine it to learn about angles and how to measure angles. Lily and Dora each turn the hour hand on a clock face. They make different angles by turning the hand, the hour hand. Who makes the greater angle? Explain how you know. Okay, on this one right here, it shows that this first clock has the hour and the minute hand at 12. That's nobody's clock, that's just where they begin. On Lily's, she turns it to the three, which is worth 15 minutes. And if you see here, it makes a right angle. But on Dora's, she turns it to the four, which is worth 20 minutes, and it's bigger than a right angle. So you can tell that Dora's angle is an obtuse angle, and Lily's angle is a right angle. So which one is bigger? Who turned their clock to make the angle bigger? Well, we know that a right angle is 90 degrees, and an obtuse angle is bigger than... 90 degrees. So uh, Dora turns her clock more than Lily. Lily's angle is a right angle, which is 90 degrees. Dora's angle is an obtuse angle, which is more than 90 degrees. All right, let's go ahead and page, turn to page 674. On 674, um, we already explained how we know that Dora turned the greater angle, but let's take a look here. Just like I was saying on the other page, um, every circle is worth 360 degrees. So a degree is a unit of measure for angles. Just like how whenever we are working with clocks, we measure them with minutes and hours and seconds, well, with circles, um, we can also measure them using degrees. So we show degrees with the little circle up towards the top symbol. And if you turn in a circle all the way, so if you start here and you go all the way around to this, that's 360 degrees. So if you were standing facing the wall this way and you turn all the way around, to where you're facing the wall again, you made a 360 degree turn. So if you look at this diagram right here, those degrees are teeny, 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 tiny pieces. So they kind of, like if we look at it just right here, we're not gonna be able to see the lines for the degrees. So our book enlarged this or magnified it so you can see it better. 
And as you see here, they um, just magnified just a little bitty spot. So the way you measure degrees is not from line to line, but you measure it by the space that's in between the lines. So right here, this little space in between the line is worth one degree. And then here's another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, and another one. So this is worth one, two, three, four, five, six, seven degrees is what's in between here. Because I'm counting the spaces between the lines, and there are seven spaces between the lines. And each one of those spaces is worth one degree. So it says, look at the diagram below. An angle that turns through one 360th of a circle is called one degree angles. How many one degree angles are in a circle? So if we did this and counted all the way around, we would see that there's 360 degrees. And it's kind of like having a fraction. So if I said, the pizza guy ate one piece of my 360 degree circle. He ate one out of 360. So circles are, it's almost like a fraction. If you have a whole circle, it's 360 over 360. But if somebody eats a piece of it, or almost all of it, each time the circle gets smaller, um, but our denominator is still gonna say the same. So it says the red angle in the diagram turns through part of the circle. Count to find the measure of the red angle and write the measure of the red angle. We already decided that it was seven degrees. A ray turns to form a right angle in the circle at the right. So here's a ray and there's a ray. What is the measure in degrees of a right angle? So. Remember how we said all circles are worth 360? Well, this circle is split up into four pieces. So I'm going to divide that by four. Four cannot go into three, but four times nine is 36. Bring down my zero. Well, four cannot go into zero, so 90 degrees. That's how we figured out that right angles are worth 90 degrees because when you make a fourth of a turn on a circle, it makes 90 degree turn. So that's how we know a right angle is worth 90 degrees. So each of these spaces between the lines, if we were to blow it up like we blew up this area right here, each one of these spaces would have 90 degrees, that would have 90 spaces between the lines on each part of this circle. Okay, go ahead and take a second to answer this. How does the way a ray turns through the circle help you think about the measure of an angle? I'm gonna say a ray turns all the way through a circle of 360 degrees. So an angle's measure is how far around a circle a ray in the angle turns. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at page 675. Think about what you know about angles. Fill in each box and use words, numbers, and pictures to show as many ideas as you can. So if I said this in my um, own word, a degree is a unit of measure 
for angles. Okay. One example of it is a right angle measures 90 degrees. Another example would be to write it like this as 90 degrees. I also learned that there are 360 degrees in a whole circle. And we learned that the symbol for degrees is that. It's a little zero. And then another way we can show is like this. That's how we can measure degrees. All right, on number two. The red angle below turns through a part of the circle. Count to find the measure of the red angle. Write the measure of the angle in degrees. Okay, so they made it bigger over here for us so we can see it. So if we count the spaces between the lines, we've got one, two, three, four, five spaces between the line, which means this is worth five degrees. Let's look at page 676. Bo and Kong each turn the hour hand on a clock face. They make different angles by turning the hour hand. Who makes the greater angle? Explain how you know. Okay, so this is where we started. And they turned the red hour hand. Bo turned his to two, which is... It doesn't quite make a square because we learned that when it goes to the three is when it makes a right angle. So we know that this is less than 90 degrees. So it's an acute angle. Kong's angle, on the other hand, goes all the way to the three. So it's a right angle because it is exactly 90 degrees, just like how we learned on this page that when you go a fourth of the way through a circle, that it's 90 degrees. So it's a 90 degree angle, so it's a right angle. Well, a right angle or going to the three is bigger than going to the two. So the way that I know is that Kong's angle is bigger because a 90 degree right angle is larger than an acute angle which is less than 90 degrees. Okay, that's it for today's session. I will see you back for session two.